too. All right. All right. That's my catchphrase. All right. It's, it's, it's not good, but you it's what Matthew I got. McConaughey. <laughs> All right. I say it once. Right. He says it three times. Yeah. We've got to find someone that says it twice, and then yeah. we'll then have the, the duo. <laughs> so we are we are at the Orient Express in Smyrna. Yeah. In Smyrna. Vining. Smyrna yeah. Vinings. This is one of the coolest places someone has taken me, by the way. Yeah. It's so it's a childhood favorite. It sure. is awesome. It's a, it's a train. It's a it literal a train. train. We're in a train right now. <laughs> it's so cool. So thank you guys for subscribing. Episode uh, seven of season two of Bite Worthy. Bite Worthy is a term that I don't think anybody else but me uses at yeah. this point, but it, it's a term where uh, a, a comic that is good enough to want to steal from or want to take, you are no exception, buddy. Today we have um, a, a good one. We have a good one here. We always have good ones, but. I like how you said that, like all better. the other ones haven't been good. <laughs> nice. uh, take that, Taylor Neely. Yeah, uh, suck it, suck it. He was only my premiere, but no big deal. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're better yeah. than, than a lot of comics that I know yeah. and I've seen, and congrats to you, Thank but you. we are with uh, Liam Nelson. Happy, happy, happy. Um, so man, first off, I gotta say uh, congrats to your comedic success. success. Thank you. Because you have featured, uh, recently featured for Dusty Slay. Yeah, just and got back yesterday. Yeah, ho open for, you hosted for Sam Morrell, mm -hmm. Zach, right? you you kind of seen some some faces. You got, if you were to drop some names, like they, they hit the floor pretty hard. You're hitting some, yeah. some heavy names. So right names now on my list, uh, I feature for Kate Willett, Joe Zimmerman, uh, and Dusty, and then I open I, and I host for Sam uh, Killer. pretty regularly on the road. My first question is actually Dusty Slay related. Oh. Uh, is there a time, like either at a show or during a drive or on your on your comedy venture where you're where you're like, I'm not having fun. Not having fun here. Because normally, we're having fun here. I mean, I was you know, telling you about earlier, uh, the Sunday show of this run, like, you know, we had great shows all weekend. And the Sunday show wasn't bad. No. It was just not nearly as good as the Saturday. Like, the Saturday shows were the best of yeah. all the weekend. And then going into the Sunday show, it was just a, the audience, like, <laughs> Dusty has a very specific style. And a lot of times, like, I have some slightly darker stuff than what his audience is looking for sometimes. Right. And so they weren't really jiving with me as much as other audiences have been and especially that weekend I mean it was a great run up until that point I and mean, it was still a good set but like having to do 30 minutes in front of an audience who doesn't necessarily want to see you it's definitely uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely not the most fun thing ever like when he texted me while I was on stage like I told you this was going to be a shit show it's like yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's just a, take a bite of that like, shit you're sandwich. good dude cool. like, yeah, but, Let's just gotta eat it I don't yeah. think any audience that I've ever played is wanted to see me they don't come to see me i'm just yeah. there you just surprised them yeah. by being it's like first. if you're at a if you're if you're like at a, a house party and someone's like hey someone brought a sub i'm like oh okay that's that's neat yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how i am yeah. that's how i feel a lot of the clubs they'll like call out like oh give it up for your headliner who's in back dusty slay and then they're like and keep that energy going for your opener <laughs> yeah. like, they're like, they're like, oh. they thought they were about to see dusty and then my goofy <laughs> ass walks out of i had a i had a i had a that same feeling because um it was Adam Ray, and I, I came up with a joke on the spot. Landed flat, but I, I was like, "Hey, y'all, some. I, you know what's funny about, you know, performing right before you're gonna see Adam Ray is that like, it's like you're here to buy tickets to eat prime rib, and like they're like, here, have this uh, chop steak. Yeah. You know, Just, that's kind of how it, yeah, yeah, have this greasy little thing you got. Do you, do you, you don't have a catchphrase, do you? Uh, Do you have anything you say a lot? I mean, I'm putting, like, I'm loose inside on merch. It's like a joke that I have. Yeah. Uh, catchphrase? That's all Mark um, syndrome. Yeah, yeah joke, basically, you know? yeah. <laughs> nice. um, I, you cornered the market there. <laughs> we're having a good time does sneak into your vocabulary when you spend time around Dusty. Because oh, he literally walks in, he's like, all right, we're having a good time. We're having a good time. Yeah. Yeah, so Brandon, it's just like it just Brandon. it sticks, it kind of bleeds over into your vocabulary. <laughs> I don't have I don't have a catchphrase though. No, not yet. Well, maybe, maybe you'll. Maybe you give we'll me a yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I want to be a catchphrase guy. I mean, no. but maybe who, who knows? Something will, but something will be like I do say that a lot. It was uh, I think. You know, but I say you know, know at you the know. end of a lot of jokes. You know, you know, or not a great look. Uh, it's not a great else. look. <laughs> A solid. It, it originated from my like joke about not being able to shit on planes and having to do it with the door open. Like it's not a great look. It's not for a me. great look. <laughs> but there's a lot of a lot of my jokes are just me looking kind of silly. So I like it. I'm not a good look. 
I like that. So, this is the only question I have about your height. All right. I know, because you, when you're one of the best opening jokes I've ever heard. Yeah. You say, yep, seven feet tall. I just I just Pause. walk out. It's like, the longer I can extend can we it. shut the fuck about it? Just, like, I'll, I'll wait, like, three minutes sometimes if I have the, like, stage time for it. If it's, like, a loose show, I'll, I'll just, like, see how long I can go. And people will start clapping and stuff, <laughs> yeah, like, before I say it. anything. And then I'll say seven feet. And it, like, I mean, kicks it off every time. <laughs> it's a great opener, man. Yeah. Killer. So I only have one question about it. It's not even a question. It's more of like a rapid fire test. So seven feet tall, just some things that I came up with that might be over or under seven feet tall. Right. All right. So just quick thinking. Six bowling pins. Under. No, over. 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 Correct. Uh, one and a half tubas. Under. Under. Yep. Uh, I've never seen half a tuba. <laughs> I haven't either, but... It, 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 there's a multiverse and Sounds I like guess. a horrible train accident with a tuba <laughs> player. All right. Yeah. A shitty marching band. Uh, one, the average uh, length of a giraffe's neck. Longer. Under. Really? Yeah. I'm taller than a giraffe's neck. You are. Right. Cool. Uh, two Peter Dinklage's. Over. Over. Nice. Yeah. yeah. He's got he's got a big heart. <laughs> uh, the dick of an elephant. Under. Under, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Dick, Dick I, could, I don't is, know if I can handle it. <laughs> Dick of an elephant is me because uh, it, they're like, the average size is just under six foot. I'm like, well, that's, there you go. That's me. Yeah. Good. So in addition, keeping on the, keep this train of tall rolling train. Good. Nice. We're in a train. I mean, it's just all <laughs> tying in. It's my comedy genius at work. Yeah. I'm doing callbacks in this interview. <laughs> callbacks like in the interview. In addition to stand-up comedy, uh, do you do you do Chewbacca impersonation anymore? Did you did you stop? I wish I could stop. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> uh, Jeff, if you're seeing this, I love you. Uh, but it's, <laughs> uh, you know, it's definitely something that's like I needed money, and a guy owned a Chewbacca suit that happened to fit, or he customized to fit me. Yeah, uh, and then. Now I just do it so little, like, so n not often enough to where it's like an inconvenience in my life. I'll just kind of do it like once every year or so, like once or twice a year. I figured it'd be like a, a Usually it's for like a UGA something. frat party. <laughs> They're just like insistent on having, and they keep raising the budget every year so they can get me back. So it's like, no. and then now like they all know me and because I do comedy in Athens. And so I did a show yeah. at Sauce House and I was doing my Chewbacca joke about where I make fun of the frat boys who I am Chewbacca oh my for. God. And then one dude's like, are you the ki fi Chewbacca? And I'm like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and they're like, this is like all Kai Fi. I'm like, oh. oh so like the whole crowd, is, and they loved it. I mean, they were talking about having me come back next year to do Chewbacca for an hour, then take off the mask and host the rest of the show, like <laughs> with in the suit but with the mask off, and like roast all That's their killer. like. That's killer. Frat That's brothers an illustration and stuff. where you have your head. Yeah, like, yeah. It's so great. It's, it's a fun it's like tune. It's my closing joke a lot of the time too, especially with club work. So it's like sure, sure. It's something fun, and I'll, I'll do it just so I keep getting new Chewbacca experiences to add to the joke. <laughs> uh, the new Chewbacca experiences. We should all welcome such things. Because that's honestly like the wildest <laughs> job I've ever had. Just like how people treat you. Yeah, like people treat me like a crazy, like mythical thing already. <laughs> but me in a fur suit, I mean, people are jumping on my back by surprise. Like, oh I mean, my god! Uh, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's crazy. It's the worst thing to do. I'd handle you with care. Like this, this guy's got yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I, you remember the Chewbacca? You don't remember the Marfan syndrome joke? <laughs> like, come right. on, buddy, what yeah. are you doing? That's hilarious. I, uh, I, I think, I think, I don't think I would do an an impersonation of I don't think anything is impressive my height I think if there's like a, a Frankie Muniz like impersonation I guess I can do that I don't know maybe uh, I'm not quite dwarf short I have a right. joke where I thought I was like am I the tallest little person yeah like I could be but I was like seven inches away I was like All right, yeah. I'm You're just, just the littlest little, tall person yeah the littlest tall person yeah yeah that's that's what I thought I'm the, and I'm the, I thought I was the tallest little person I was like yeah. I might be in both so but the question is actually about Star Wars itself. Okay. Is there a series that compares or is better than Star Wars, like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or 
the Fast and Furious franchise. Uh, no, I think Star Wars is pretty, it's pretty up there. I mean, I had like Star Wars bed sheets as a kid, not because I was like super into Star Wars, because I mentioned that I like Star Wars one time in front of like my, oh my grandparents, God. and they're like, all right, so that's what Everything. we're getting them gifts about forever. Uh, and so just like, yeah, I mean, I, I've been Star Wars is definitely like the closest thing, but I'll, 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 honestly, like I was into most movies as a kid. Like I started out as, as a filmmaker, so like I was very into like the weird indie whatever uh, for yeah. a while and then like Coen Brothers are kind of like my favorite director uh, so anything, anything. anything from them is like I think I probably watch Old Brother Where Art Thou maybe 50, 60 times yeah it's it a, is so good, good. Yeah. Big it's Lebowski. one of the best movies ever yeah. made like it's super good I wear the Big Lebowski sweaters a lot I saw that yeah. yeah that was voted the number one stoner movie of all time I mean yeah it's, it is pretty yeah pretty rock without song. a question and when I used to smoke weed which I don't need more this was over a decade ago <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm dating myself for yeah. sure um, I used to watch that yeah. non-stop oh yeah quote it Oh man, I don't quote it because I uh, have friends. But I, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, I feel like when you quote movies, that really puts up a wall between you and reality. Like you're, if you're like, if you can only talk through movies, but that might just be me being me. That's like that's <laughs> like when you watch Norman and, and Joe List on their stuff. They just it's just Seinfeld references oh God, all dude. day. The same with Bargazzi on his podcast. Yeah, yeah. He'll just like reference Seinfeld all the time. I'm like, all right, all the time. I have a friend that's like that. He has two box sets of Seinfeld because in case one gets damaged. I know. Oh my God. Like, I know, man. Is this fallout shelter just filled with extra copies of Seinfeld, like <laughs> in case the world ends. Where's the food? I don't know, but we we do have Jerry. Jerry is <laughs> yeah. here to make us laugh for the next. We launch episode until where this VHS the... spins yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, that's like, exactly right. That's exactly right. You, you want to hear something wild? I've seen yeah, maybe here. three episodes of Seinfeld, and I was like, not really, my, not really for me. And then I just moved. On. I know, and the comics are going to crucify me for this. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know, I might try it again now that I am a comedian and like might get more out of it, but I don't know, it just like 90 sitcoms never hit for me. Like I was much more of like an office parks and rec, like that like mockumentary style. Like what we do in the shadows right now is like one of my favorites. Uh, it's good, I heard it's really good. Really I haven't good. given that a watch. Um, so like, I'm a big like mockumentary guy because I was into documentaries when I was younger too. But yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll give Seinfeld another shot. I have a lot of time on the road now. You should. So. You'll. You'll. And, and I have a feeling it's someone a will guilt me into watching a bunch of it at some point comedy. in like a comedy condo because yeah. you know how coming. They're like, you haven't seen Seinfeld. Come on, bro. we're not leaving we're until not. exactly <laughs> like the. I'll get you a pizza and we'll watch yeah. Seinfeld. My treat. We're gonna watch it. You gotta see this episode at least. Uh, the soup not. You don't know the soup. You know, <laughs> like I do know who that oh, is. Oh, you but. don't know. You don't know. Can he? Can he? You know all those, all those ones, all yeah. the characters. Yeah, yeah. You're struggling to name another character. Are you also not? I a thought big it was fan Kenny. Uh, I was thinking Kenny Garcia, but yeah. that's because I'm doing uh, doing a show of his. Um, uh, Keith Hernandez. Oh, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Not was Keith. that just a subtle flex I just heard? Uh, oh, sorry. I was just missing oh, yeah. for a show <laughs> that I'm doing. Oh man. Um, no, he he runs the show, and I, I got to. I'm lucky enough to get booked. And, nice. Yeah. So this yeah. is the biggest. That's that's how I like down. to hear you guys talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's very that's lucky. It. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Humble brag. Yeah. What about the humble brags in comedy? Yeah, you know. Who cares? Come see me, it's August 18th. <laughs> yeah, this is Ryan's show. He's allowed to yeah, promote his I'll do shows. what I want. Flip this table over. Um, I will say this: being a road comic, you are good at throwing a playful jab at a venue, and I like it. Like it's you, fun. you roast the venue, not uh, like hard. Yeah. But they're like, oh, I can see what he did there. It's good. It helps like center me in the moment a little bit. Yeah. And, like keep my brain firing a little bit. Like if I, I always walk into a new place and like think of what the place feels like because then if later in my set like someone says something offhand I can be like oh you know that's, that's a lot coming from a person who's currently sitting in a place that looks like blank or I can do it up top <laughs> that's just, like, good it just helps me like be in the space more in my head so if I'm sitting there and I and it also gives me new material to do on every show and you know that the, makes sense with the way things are now it's like you have to have tapes and so my series of like roasting the venue is one that I like doing where that I'll is like a good have one. little short yeah. jokes about all and I can also be like oh here's all the places I performed and here's a little short joke about each one of them um, wow look at the, that's fun brilliant little plug for all the stuff that you at uh, West Palm though like the, the weekend I just did with Dusty I ended up doing a whole like bit about it who's like, humble bragging now I know <laughs> I, well you know this is an interview with me Ryan so uh, I don't know Do, uh, maybe I'll, I just want to talk about my, yeah, my accomplishments uh, we'll about how tall I am. Yeah. 
the next half hour. Um, but <laughs> no, it's like I did a whole story about a dude who walked into the green room uh, doing cocaine. Uh, and like tried to offer me some after acknowledging that he had heard that I had a no. heart condition and he was like come on man I'm an EMT. I got you like, <laughs> no. I don't think you can get me from cocaine like I still have a heart condition <laughs> yeah, uh, It doesn't doesn't change that but then man. the like management of the venue like asked me if they like oh, is there Anything I can do to, like remedy the situation after they've gotten him out Like do you want me to make him give you money and they like go out <laughs> and the, the manager comes back with 60 bucks cash cocaine reparations He just gives me 60 bucks cash uh, apparently they had told the dude like oh this comic's super upset and like he, oh my like, god You're gonna ruin awesome. our relationship with the venue like uh, with this comic like you gotta pay him you gotta pay him And so like I had the venue shake this guy down <laughs> essentially <laughs> Um, and I just talked about part it of the stage. mob, everybody. So that, that'll probably be something that goes up on my social. That's classic, soon. dude. Um, yeah. That so, is so funny. I, 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 I enjoy it though. It, it helps like me feel like I'm doing something new all the time because you know you need that little bit of excitement, that little bit of like risk to take. And I always sure. do it near the front of my set. It's like I'll be like seven feet and then. Has do it ever that. backfired? Like, did you go too hard at a venue? Uh, They're like, hey, you, you mentioned couple times. You mentioned that disco ball that's been there since 1930 or whatever. They've never said, no one who owns a venue has ever said anything, but bartenders who were like drunk or something, who were like already didn't want a comedy show there, will be like, you know, I don't appreciate you talking about my this place. This is my like life. That. It's like, yeah, like I have to be here basement. all the time, so don't call it a college dorm room, okay? I, like, I can't even unhear it. Yeah, it's, yeah <laughs> it's very so like good. people being offended on behalf of the people who own the place, and like the only ever, the only feedback I've ever gotten is like, oh, that was fun, like you know. I think that's a big statement on society right now. <laughs> A lot of people have been pissed off at people on their behalf. Oh, people love doing that with my like jokes about me being disabled. They're like, oh, you can't make fun of disabled people. It's like, I'm making fun of me. Like, I don't... Yeah, what? You're being me. You're being ableist right now by saying, I can't talk about myself. Like, right? you can talk about yourself. Why can't I talk about myself? Like, no, because I'm this way. I can't joke about myself. Exactly. Get out of here. Like, that's, that's a crazy thing. I'm a thing. protected people, according to you. Like, <laughs> all right, protect me from myself then. <laughs> Shit. Don't riddle me that, man. How do you still... Yeah, right. <laughs> So, uh, ha has the venue ever like done the opposite where you? It, it's so cool or impressive that you're just like, I can't make fun of it. This place is awesome. Is there a place like that where you're just like, I can't throw a jab? There's nothing bad about this place. This no, place usually if it has more con, like, I mean, Zanies I've never really made fun of, uh, except for the fact that like it's I, it's got a stage and a sign. It's yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? I'll ask like any doctors in here, and then when inevitably no one raises their hand, I'll be like, no, this is not where doctors go. Uh, <laughs> but so that's a little subtle one, but that's most places. Um, yeah. And that's more at the audience than at the venue. Yeah. But yeah, Zanies, I guess just because I've like that's been a place where like I feel like it's given me a lot of opportunity, so I've never gone into it feeling yeah. like I have to have like a new joke every time. It's just that, that's that. like my favorite place to work out new material. Yeah, um, they literally have a what workout Wednesday, workout uh, Monday. new material Monday, yeah, new material Monday, and yeah. then uh, Tuesday the like Zany's All Star Show is essentially like a longer set version of New Material Monday. Very uh, cool. So I'll usually go up for like a Monday Tuesday run. I might have, damn, I might have, I might have to go up there one day and see what's about. Good luck, yeah. Send Lucy an email. Um, Killer. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're at the Orient Express. Yes. Which sounds like an old movie <laughs> with a theme, you know. Yeah. I could. It is an old train. Yeah. Yeah, it's a definitely an old train. I have some silly restaurant names. Okay. That are based on movies that, like, would make. You see, you'll see one grow. Like the okay. Pelican Brief. You know okay. that movie? Yeah. That'd be a seafood restaurant for businessmen. Okay. You know? Yeah. And then like Fast and Furious, It'd be like a burger place that like yells at you. Right. You know. So like a Burger King. <laughs> oh, just a burger or Popeyes. Uh, I guess it's not a burger place, but Popeyes always is yelling at you. They are. They do. They do yell. That is the loudest chicken franchise. It's the most aggressive it fast is. food. Popeyes. Yeah. What do you want? Just throw a sandwich. Yeah, at exactly. You. I like it. Uh, Pulp Fiction would be a juice bar ran by like people in movie characters or cartoons. Oh, that's fun. You like that? Yeah. Cool. I don't. I don't know where that was going. I just thought it was funny. I'm just riffing. I, just I like it. Yeah, just riffing. Like, I got, I got Callbacks, some riffs. What yeah. am I doing? Build, building your set live, live and in person. Right yeah. Here. Sorry. This is this is an interview. This is my new ten. <laughs> so you so you've eaten here since you were a kid. You said. Yeah. Since I mean, as long as I can remember, uh, my family's place is like five minutes down the road. Uh, oh, that's killer. Adopted sister. We came here for her first birthday party, and she's like. Chinese 
and yeah. the whole staff of this place is Chinese, despite it being like a Chinese and Japanese restaurant. Uh, and they all like took her in as like their favorite customer ever. And yeah. so we get like a bunch of free shit every time we come here. And they're always like, "Oh, so good to see you guys!" Like, nice. so I'm, I'm all about like feeling. So the, those are like the things that make like, especially living in a city yeah. where everybody's like here, there. There's pockets that you have in Atlanta. Yeah. This feels like one of them. Dining's is nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like right outside the city. It's, it's, Candler it's, it's, Park is another area yeah. that's like, we're well knit. And that, like, I, I see those places. Yeah. And these are the places where you like build lifelong family, friend, business yeah. relationships. Those are, those are fun. What else have you, is there like a place that's not food or like that you've like a arcade or something that you've also kept with as a kid? Good question. Um, or even like a habit that you have in Atlanta that you've done a lot since you were a kid? Or? I mean, obviously comedy is, is a big, like, way. I started comedy right out of high school uh, when all my friends left for college and yeah. I didn't have any friends still in town. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm going to go start shooting comedy shows and see if I can, like, hang out with people. Yeah. Uh, but as far as, like, since I was a kid, I mean, I always made movies when I was a kid, so. Yeah just any sort of, I was a magician and I made movies when I was a kid. So I, I've i always been weirdly like career focused. Like I, I always turn, it's it's very, it's very a very toxic trait that I have where like <laughs> I'll take something that I love and then make it into a job and then start to hate it, uh, which you know. No, the last part not so good, but everything else sounds great. Yeah, but like. How do I monetize everything I love? Great, and how do I dig it into the ground where I hate it? Not good. Yeah, because like with <laughs> video, it's like, oh uh, yeah, you're making movies for fun when you're a kid, but then like you want to make money doing it and you're shooting a bunch of weddings all the time and you're like oh i hate weddings and video now <laughs> right so it's I like that's still what i do people. to I pay the myself. bills some like, of the time and yeah. i'm just hoping like i mean i've done comedy for like two and a half years now and or more than two and a half like 2.75 years now but it's like i haven't gotten to that place and i felt the like start of getting to that place and everything else i've done way earlier than this so like yeah. comedy is the first thing where i'm like oh First thing I think of when I wake up, like passion wise, I mean, obviously, like relation, like girlfriend and all that, but like as far as like what I want to do with my day, like write jokes and tell jokes is still like priority, you know? Yeah. So I wake up, kiss my girlfriend, and then I, I open my Google Doc of joke and jokes and premises. Like I have it, it's a and long. Then, then you jerk off. And, and then I just. <laughs> to your own genius. Yeah. What's the deal with Instagram? <laughs> What's funny about the Instagram like button is that. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Is that a, is that's a funny bit. That's a good bit. That's a, that's a joke that I I tried once and I was like, ah. Oh. It's like with the, the ironic thing about Instagram is that there are no other options. Yeah. Like you can only like something or not like it yeah. or like which doesn't show anything. Right. So it'd be, and a, there was a lead singer of a metal band that passed away about a month ago from the Black Dahlia murders. It's like a technical death metal band. And I was like, oh man, 117,000 people liked that this guy died. I was like, I thought it was really yeah. ironic. Right. You know, why don't you just put like a, a not like button? I don't like this. Yeah. You know, I just I thought it was stupid. That comics. <laughs> that, that, that one's free. Take yeah, it take before, it before he does it on stage. I don't want. I don't want it. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't. I, re I retired it already. Oh really? I told it once and I put it on the shelf. I did a lot, that, That's a lot of what I did early on. Like I used to like drink more than I should have before going up, just because I was nervous. Like comedy, yeah. Yeah. Well, so like to give you an idea of like my trajectory. So I started out. I was like, I'm lonely, uh, and then I started. <laughs> I started shooting for a magician friend of mine. Oh my god! Uh, which is just what a what a like first door to open on the way to a career. Uh, and he was opening for a comedy show. <laughs> Will Foskey was on that comedy show. Oh, wow. I was like, this dude's super funny. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I was like, oh, I, want, I don't. Let me find more of his stuff. Looked him up online. There was nothing. And so I was like, I just DM'd him, being like, hey, do you want me to come out and start filming your shows for you? So I went out to like. 15 like, different yes, shows. Do we met, kiss? What do we do? Yeah, right? <laughs> met the whole scene, like doing it for free, basically. Yeah. He paid me like 20 bucks, you know. Sick. Uh, but that's uh, not what it was about. And I got to meet the whole scene, and then one day he was like, Yeah, I just would constantly talk about, like, oh, I've always thought about doing comedy. And I have a clip from me when I was 17 He's just doing like, an interview do with Andy Erickson, who's a comedian with Marfan Syndrome, who's on Last Comic Standing, who's wow. a good friend of mine. And I was like, Yeah, you know, I've always thought about doing comedy. And she's like, Just try it. Uh, so, like, two years later, uh, Will's like, just there's a bucket, put your name in the bucket. Like, if you want to do comedy, do it. Uh, and I was like, all right. And so I did it and I got pulled, and then that was my first set. And it, honestly, I have a tape of it. 
an objectively you like... You have a tape of your first set. I do. I have a tape of every set I've ever done, pretty much. Uh, wow. Which is... What a, what a way to go down a rabbit hole of your own ego. Uh, if I ever want to hate myself, I just go back and watch like 90% of the stuff I did yeah. early on. That's, I, I look back at my first, because mine was, it was very generous, the laughter. Yeah. And because I took a gradu, you know, comedy class and during the graduation, they are just... Oh, punchline graduation is like... I don't think I've ever seen anything Floaties, and yes. then you throw you yes. into the deep end afterwards. Yeah. That, that's been the funniest thing to watch, is like a bunch of people who come oh. from the comedy class and then come to like their first limerick or something and then just get their soul crushed in front of yes. everybody and be like, all right, well, yeah, not everyone, not every room's filled with your friends and the friends of everyone else on the lineup, <laughs> right. so that is, that's gonna happen. I, I experienced that and I was like, wow. And then my goal is to go to an open mic and then if I get even a decent laugh out of comics or half oh, yeah. of the money, I can take that to a club yeah. and it yeah. blows the roof off. It's right. like, oh my God. So it's a very, of dusting your expectations of yes. what you're going to get in every it's room. It's so good because, and then there's like places that if you if you make people laugh at a place that just happens to have comedy, yeah. versus a place that's for comedy, right. you take that that set or that joke or whatever it is at a place that just happens to have a pop up comedy like an yeah. Italian restaurant. Right. Like, oh, oh there's gonna be comedy here. Yeah, like, what? I just, the crowd. I just want chicken parmesan. Oh, let's yeah. get the kids out. Oh, that's like, yeah. and then you take that and it's like, wow, this is really, that's something. Yeah. So I, I've experienced that. Um, That's definitely part of like coming back from the road too. It's, it's hard to go to the same open mics you've been going to for years because you're like, man, do I want to be sad tonight, or do I want to <laughs> feel like I'm good at comedy for another week and just I, do I a the festival? That's you know what I, I have that I have had that feeling and. It, it deters you from going out, but then it's like. But it's once, good. You need to go out. Like, once you don't do it for a while, you're like, oh, I missed that mic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's like an abusive boyfriend. Well, a little bit, but it also just like it's where you get better. It's like eating shit over and over again. Like there's only so much shit you can eat on, on club stages, and it still make you better. Like if yeah. you walk into a room with ten people who have heard all your jokes and you can still make them laugh, like you're doing something special. That's you know? a really good. That's a really good indicator. If if, it, if I tell a joke that it's one of my regular jokes and I just put it in there and mix it with uh, my new material I'm trying out. If the joke still gets a laugh, I know I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah. Good. Right. That's good. That's a good joke. That's my keeper. Yeah. That's a great one. Um, I started making, um, when I go to open mic, I just, I'll just treat it like a, like a pure workshop. Yeah. So I'll just tell the joke and then I'll look at someone like, well, six, ten, what? Yeah. Is it a four? They're like, this is six. I was like, oh, great, cool. Yeah. And then I'll just do that on stage during yeah. my mic time. Because you can't get better than an actual comedian workshop. Yeah. Like when you write with people, that's some of the best things we do. Yeah. You know, it's just shooting the shit, having a, a good hang, and then coming up with a tag or, you know, just another comedian's perspective. I've, I've written, oh, God five six tags out of like four jokes yeah that just came from talking yeah and just hanging yeah and it's not even on the stage sometimes it's in the green room or next right. next to the stage or you know we're making fun of our buddy who tried this joke or I'm yeah. like you could have said this or some i won't heckle him at an open mic unless yeah. unless it's like if i go to dorado yeah i'm like ha ha lose it you can do it what, what's what's the consequence yeah uh, you're gonna bash me for heckling you when there's three people and Miguel. Like, good, shut me down. Yeah, <laughs> please, shut me, sure. shut me down a little bit, all right? So, yeah, I, I like that. It's a fun thing. Um, I'll ask you this last question here, uh, and then we'll plug dates and all that stuff. You and Katie are a super cute couple, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, you travel a fair amount. Yeah. Like, not only just for comedy, but outside of comedy. Yeah. And now is, it's pretty much all for comedy, but yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, that's okay. And, that, and, and is there, like, a destination that you guys are like, we, we're building towards this and when we have time and or the money we're going here is there a destination that you guys have in mind that you're like we're going i mean we went on a great trip with my family to europe which i feel like hit a lot of good like spots that i've been where'd you hit. go in europe uh italy and london you, uh, like three, you did, I know. where in italy did you uh Positano on the Amalfi coast uh, now i'm telling them I'm doing wow. the whole booth back. uh my grandpa passed away and left my mom some money oh, and so we got to do like the Never got to go to Europe as a kid trip. Um, so it was like, yeah, we went to Positano, Venice, and Rome, and then uh, London. And so I did a week of shows out in London. 
which was crazy. How was comedy in London? Um, they hate the venue riffs. Uh, back what? to that question. Uh, they don't like it. Uh, they. This pub has been here for since 17. I years was in a weird little like beer garden club that was like you know 80 people. Really fun room. Uh, yeah. and they had, like I had a good time telling jokes there, but like. I go up and I was like, oh, you know, it's crazy, like, being in a place with so much history, like, this, you know, this place was actually the uh, sexiest air raid shelter from, like, it was, like, this big, like, black room with, like, pink accents, and it looks like a dominatrix then, but, like, they did not laugh at all, and then I was like, all right, So it, it has backfired, yeah, just not in has. America. I forgot about that, <laughs> yeah, I, blo I blocked out London, but... Yeah, London was weird. Just uh, not in America. Like my first show, that That's happened. Hilarious. Second show was this like weird little upstairs show at the Camden Comedy Club, and the dude who was hosting it was like, "Hey, I don't want to do this. Do you want to host?" And I was like, <laughs> "I don't want to do this." I'm from America. Like I, we are <laughs> I don't in know Camden anything. right now. Uh, and he's like, "Yeah, but you'll be fine. You can do 30 minutes up top." I'm like, "Sure, all right." <laughs> Just okay. and then a I, casual I 30. The next 25 minutes to get like 20 people up there, and I had a pretty fun show. Uh, I don't have a tape of it because my camera died, but yeah. Wow. It was, it was a weird, weird experience, but yeah. So you you, you did some barking over in, in... I did. They are not as receptive to barking. They, <laughs> wow. like, looking at me like I was offering them, like, a timeshare. It was... <laughs> yes. Because there was also a concert going on down the street, and I was like, but but I am look fun, right? Yeah. Like, you want to come Screw upstairs music. to a music. Let me tell bar? you about like, my stories. Yeah, you want to come listen to a guy talk for 30 minutes uh, who so might be funny? I have followed music before, and it is... It is the hardest. Yeah. It's the worst. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like the Shane Gillis joke where you can, like, he hears the music coming oh, the wall. He's like, oh, they have, right. they're like, like that's a, where a I way better from. time in there. <laughs> Finger somebody, take ecstasy. Exactly. That's what it is. It's so, so true. That's hilarious. Is there, is, is there like, um, is there a place that you want to go? This is a food and comedy show. Is there a place that you want to go to for the food that you haven't gone? For food? Yeah. Um, like, you want to go to, like, China or Mexico, you know, maybe Mexico yeah, for food. I, I try Mexico's some, like, got some really dude. good Mexican food. Um, One of the best uh, trained chefs that I've ever got to like experience their food was trained in Mexico City. Yeah, Japan also. I mean, oh dude, where we are right now, Japanese food. Big fan oh, of that. Dude, if I, I would love, I would love to go like on a Japanese fishing boat and they just catch a tuna and they just slice into it yeah. and just feed it to me. I don't need to I'm watch it get murdered, but I <laughs> I will I will eat it after I, they I'm the opposite. They I take will the murder. Out. Oh god, I will, yeah. I will do it. See, I don't care. I was raised in a redneck family, but I was like the soft one, so <laughs> they always used to just make fun of me, call me a pussy for putting yeah. on sunscreen and stuff, you know. Yeah. It was, yeah. But you're like, ha, who doesn't have melanoma now? Well, my mom also showed me Bambi the night before I went hunting for the first time. Uh, <laughs> oh, my and it was, God. You know, That's a little psychological traumatic. warfare. Yeah. That's terrible. She didn't want me to shoot the deer. And, I, and then I didn't want to shoot the deer after watching that movie. Aww. So. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I understand that. Yeah. I just watched, uh, I just started watching, funny you bring up Bambi, I just started watching this show with April called Once Upon a Time, mm. and it's a show about characters. I used to watch characters. that with my mom when I was a kid. I heard it's really, it's, it's really good, yeah. and it's the gayest thing I've ever had to admit, but right. it's, it's an awesome show. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's... and that just made me like, in the Huntsman in there, he's like, he cries after he, when he kills them because he respects it, but he understands it, yeah. and I was like, oh, I get that, oh. Just yeah. made me think of that. That's good. Yeah. I want to go to Italy so bad. Yeah. My family is from a place called Corleone, Sicily, and then... Don't pretend like that is not the most well-known place in <laughs> it's Italy. It's not. It's it not. It is in The Godfather. Like, <laughs> well, it's based on the... Yes. It that's is the where they're from. Last name. Corleone, Sicily. So you're a, you're a Corleone. I will not confirm or deny. <laughs> no. We're not. I'm, I, can you imagine meeting with Mobster? Too short. You can't. No one would take me serious. Um, Al Pacino's not very tall. Is he? I don't know. He just he's, feels he's short. Like five, to five, yeah, he's so not, he's like 5'7", 5'8". Yeah, he's Yeah, I'm 5'5". Five, five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you 5'5"? Yeah. Five, five? Five, I have five, no reference below. Yeah, yeah, you just, point. everything it's is... like small. Yeah, yeah. small. <laughs> it's not me, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm 5'5". Five five. I didn't realize how short I was, yeah. but... We're from, we're a small family. The tallest person in my family was 6'1". Like, going back three great, three all the bigger ones were murdered for <laughs> offending the mobster in town. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Dumped in the sea. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that was it. Didn't have a hard time chopping them up. It's yeah. That's it. But we were from a place called Modugno, Italy. Tell you something about that. Mm -hmm. And so they're from Bari. That's the providences, Modugno okay. and Bari. It's on the heel of the boot. 
and it's right there. So I want to go there. Yeah. And there's a church. I looked at I was do Google Earthing and all that stuff, looking around, looking at the pizza places and like the like the real like old churches and stuff. I would go there and I would just weep because of history and the food. And I would just I, that's like a bucket list thing, man. Yeah. I would want to you go. You want to go there. to Italy and cry? Yeah, go to Italy and cry. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a fun time. <laughs> it's a great cry time. Cry in a church. Cry, yeah. and then I'll just play bocce and drink wine and there you go. You know, hit my wife or whatever Italians do. That's, that's, yeah, that's about right. feels pretty Italian. <laughs> Super Italian. Well, um, I'll ask. I started asking people this: Do you have any questions for me? Because I never know if people do or not. What do you do as your day job right now that you can afford to buy all these comedians <laughs> food? That's a good question. Um, I'm not in the mob for sure. Yeah. But you, well, the fact that you said that first makes me believe you even less. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely not mobbed up. That'd be awesome if I was. Yeah. Um, I would get more feature spots. And stuff, oh yeah, for, for sure. sure. You'd be like, hey, you you, you want to do this? Trust me. Yeah. You know. But no, I, I do. I work in vending management. Um, I worked for the same company for like ten years. Nice. I worked eight years from home. So COVID, I was like. It's a thing. I didn't really realize. Nothing changed for me. It's kind of nice. And yeah, so I call businesses and we're in vending and rebates and it's kind of very niche and boring. Hmm. Um, and I've been doing that for a long time. And what helps me with comedy is I write talk tracks for telecommunication. So oh. I write verbatim what they say, when they pause, what to ask, hmm. and like the amount of words has to be shrunken down as much as possible so telemarketers or like yes but quite? it's it's like actual not like scam telemarketers they want to hear from yes yes yeah. yes yes okay. people who do business over the phone versus yeah. someone who's trying to sell something not, no versus. nigerian princes in your employer <laughs> no, no and, and I'm, I'm really good at cold calling because nice. i've learned to be conversational and I reassure people, and so that's helped with comedy a little bit. Yeah, it's so, like hosting, cold calling an audience, basically. You're like, hey, yeah. I know you don't want to hear from me at all, but, yeah, but I'm gonna be up here for about <laughs> 10 minutes, so. Would you agree that I'm funny looking, yes or no? Yeah, You're like, exactly. yeah, yeah, you fucking suck. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And then there you go. Rob, and then you, got Rob. Him. <laughs> you got him. <laughs> hook, hook, line, and sinker. Um, plug your dates, what do you got? Do you have your dates? Uh, yeah, well, so I haven't uh, fully announced it yet, but probably by the time this comes out, I will. I'm doing a run with Kate Willett, uh, featuring for her all That's across awesome. the Southeast. So Feature doing, work, man. Yeah, doing, doing like nine cities, uh, so it'll be fun. Um, I'll have that on my Instagram, Liam J. Nelson. Uh, yeah. Going to be doing uh, Lexington, Kentucky with Sam, October 13th through 15th. I'm going to be doing uh, Kansas City with Sam in December. I'm going to be doing some uh, shows with Joe Zimmerman up near New York uh, in September. I'm going to be doing uh, Dusty's Showcase in Nashville on August 24th. We're having uh, a good time. Having a very good time. Um, doing a bunch of shows in Atlanta. Uh, if you want to, if you're an Atlanta person and you want to come see me before I move, uh, you should I'll definitely be see him do comedy. It's doing very funny. Uh, Urban Tree. On